to you all. Good afternoon from India to Dr. Nikola Danisova, to Maria Rikova, to all other participants from Slovakia, a very warm, it is really warm, summer has set in here. Uh, a warm afternoon from India and a good morning also to you. Uh, we are eager, as this would be under our memorandum of understanding. This would be our fifth online talk. Isn't it, Maria? Correct me if I'm wrong. I think it is the fifth. Uh, and, and if we are slightly losing count, which means we are doing good work. So that's, that's good. Uh, and in this series then, we have today, uh, dear participants who have joined. Uh, Nicola, we have our postgraduate students sitting in the departmental hall. And uh, they are uh, there with one of our former teachers who is an alumnus. She is managing uh, the link from uh, our seminar hall. And I have joined from my chamber here. And uh, quite a few of our alumni all over the state of Gujarat, they are joining in, I can see. Uh, so from all of us here in India, from on behalf of the Saurashtra University Department of English and Comparative Literary Studies, a very warm welcome to our speaker today, Dr. Nikola Danisova, who would be speaking as we have circulated the poster, the trickster character as a civilizer in the arc narratives. This is a very interesting topic that she has taken up. First of all, going back to arc narratives, every society has their own, I mean, quite a few arc narratives within that, that there are various characters, very interesting uh, people play, people, uh, natural, supernatural uh, entities, they play their roles within which there is this trickster, Again, in every society, every arc narrative, there would be trickster. And here we are going to listen to this interesting talk about the trickster character as a civilizer. When we, when we hear this word, civilize, civilizer, again, a lot of uh, notations come to our mind. So I will not be taking much of a time and I will be uh, uh, welcoming Dr. Danisova, who is a researcher and teacher in the Institute of Literary and Artistic Communication at the Constantine, the Philosopher University, Nitra, Slovakia. And she has a specialization which is interdisciplinary anthropology of ancient narratives and within the cultural and literary aspect that she would be talking about. She is the author of many articles and among her books or monographs, uh, we have notes on the trickster as a literary art narrative. This seems to be very important because from this, we might have uh, an explanation and an exposition of her talk today. So without further ado, without, without taking much of a time, I hereby welcome you, Dr. Nikola Danisova, for your talk, please. Ma Thank you very much. It's okay, can you yes. see? So thank you very much for your attention. So we can start. This presentation will be devoted to the ancient and unique arch figure of a trickster, which appears in the religious and mythological stories in each civilization or cultural circle in the wide diapason of its possible embodiments and renditions. All researchers agree on the fact that this figure is difficult to interpret. Due to the typological variability and the bipolar diversity of this character, the efforts for a more detailed and even general definition remain equally ambiguous and contradictory. However, we are considering the universal trickster's features and these are cunning, liminarity, absence of the motive of a heroic initiation path, ambivalence, metamorphic ability, and also inherent part of the trickster's general mythological and fairy tale depiction are the elements of grotesqueness and carnival comicism as the principle of playfulness 
and turning the world upside down. So therefore, this character belongs to the area of the so-called culture of popular laughter, according Bakhtin, or picaresque mythology, according Kereni, which permeates every culture without exception. The character of a trickster is as diverse as the laughter itself in culture. He acts as a thief, outcast, speculator, frivolous provocateur, notorious liar, clever trickster, clown juggler, or impudent fool. In general, where a trickster appears, chaos ensues, rules and boundaries lose their meaning, and the entire narrative world turns upside down. By this unpredictable and severing behavior, he can disrupt the orderly structures of the fictional world for which he may or may not be punished. So today, more specifically, I will be presenting the constitutional principles of iconization of trickster as a mythological civilizer that is part of the religious mythological heritage of various nations. Despite the necessary interdisciplinary overlap, I do not claim to have employed a strictly ethnographic, folkloric and cultural anthropological approach to this topic. As a matter of priority, the following interpretation will be focused on the thematologic, sujet motivic and semantic convergences and divergences in the iconization of the mischievous civilizer in the selected sample of Asian narratives. The presentation of this interdisciplinary approach, which is anchored on literary studies, semiotics and aesthetics, is to look at the contradictory and interpretatively difficult mischievous character of a trickster from a different angle. A cultural hero is one of the key characters in religious and mythological thinking. Thanks to his creative, active form, he shapes the newly created fictitious universe, the way it operates and the quality of human existence in it. Religionist Jan Komorowski used an apt term civilizer for the cultural hero because he transforms the newly created young world by bringing the people various civilization gains, for example, hunting and agricultural tools, life-giving substances such as fires, hunting animals, edible plants, first dwellings, and so on, um, and also culture as ceremonies, traditions, art, laws, or morals. The cultural hero or civilizer as a literary character transforms the chaos into a system or order sanctified by tradition. The civilizer belongs to the so-called mythical past, similar to sacred time, or the period of in illo tempore as defined by religionist Mircea Eliade. This is the beginning, the initial period, the era of unfinished creation of the world and its ongoing formation. Building on the initial definition of the civilizer, it is evident that it is a character typical of the early stages of religious mythological thinking of man, and therefore follows a purely genealogical line in the cosmogonic, cosmological, and etiological needs. Many researches, for example, Maletinsky, Komarowski, Radin, Kereni, point out that the civilizer presented in the official and serious cosmogonic cults and religious mythological ideas can assume significantly comical traits which are typical of tricksters. In my research sample of Aj narratives, the trickster civilizer is a character that shows some of the typical features of a creator that is appears in the mythical time, transforms the cosmological order, brings the culture and so on, I said it, but also those of a trickster as an archetypal figure, as cunning, liminal, 
absence of the motif of a heroic initiation path, ambivalence, metamorphicability, and comicism. Within the religious mythological structures, the congruent and divergent characteristic between the mischievous and official civilizer can be found in the several essential areas. For higher clarity, I have visualized this characteristic in a table, which is part of my presentation. I, know. I will start with the shared features. Just like the serious and official civilizer, even, even the mischievous trickster civilizer portrays himself as an ancient supernatural figure in the form of a deified animal or a semi-god or god in the home from the pantheon of culture in which the relevant narrative emerged. In the archaic communities, for example, African, Pacific, Australian, Palo-Asian or North American tribes, where the animal-human relationship was naturally close or even existential, both the official civilizer and trickster civilizer usually takes the form of a deified <laughs> animal. The boundary between an animal and man in the primordial religious mythological systems, which are characterized by elements of animism, dynamism and shamanism, is so blurred that the civilized figure becomes the bearer of zoomorphic and anthropomorphic features and uh, it strikingly resembles the theanthropic figures from the pariel, pariental or cave paintings and engravings. Cultural historic Yelazar Meletinsky adds that many stories of archaic native communities contain the often incipient phrase it was at the time when animals were still human. From the character typological point of view, the official and mischievous civilizer is an active figure that causes tension in the plot with his disturbing actions. As the chosen characters, they know the mystery of cosmological transformation and thanks to his privileged ability, they disrupt the structure of the fictional world and carry out cosmological changes that are tolerated, legitimized and sanctified through traditions or rituals in the relevant society. It is at the very plan of action that substantial differences in the portrayal of the mischievous and official civilizer can be found. While the official civilizer as the highest theological authority deliberately reshapes the world in absolute seriousness, a trickster does not deviate from the comical ironic plane in his actions. The quintessence of the trickster's action, as his Norman Omen suggests, lies in his mischievous or gleeful banter. Through morally ambiguous actions, he accidentally causes larger or smaller changes in the sacred mythological arrangement of the respective fictional universe and establishes new, sometimes beneficial, but sometimes damaging existential order. Therefore, the trickster is both a creator, the category of good, and destroyer, the category of bad, who through his deceptive and erratic actions disrupt the cosmological structure of the universe. Melatinsky points out that other archetypal mythological figures from related semantic circles are directly connected with the category of civilizer or cultural hero in the cosmologically tuned narratives from the archaic culture. So another related semantic figures are our ancestor, that is tribe or clan creator and demiurge that is creator of the whole world. These three figures can be with each other, other overlap. In some religious mythological systems, a civilizer is also the creator of humanity or the clan over which he holds patronage. The semantically functional overlap of the civilizer 
ancestor and demiurge as a literary character is also confirmed by French structuralist Claude lévi -Strauss. He draws attention to the fact that the vast majority of native archaic communities perceive the, the totemic ancestor as clan creator, both as a demiurge, as creator of the world, and a civilizer, as a cultural hero, a patron who holds the protective hand over the new reformed defenseless humanity and facilitates its existence through various cultural achievements. For example, in the story of the Paleo-Asian Koryaks called The Great Raven and the Creaton, Creation of the World, trickster Raven Kutkinaka acts both as an ancestor and a cultural hero, but at the same is deputy demiurge on the earth. At the beginning of the subject, Demiurge Nainya decides to create the alone world. He summons the oldest and brightest being, the Great Raven, born of the primordial divine spark, to realize his next cosmogonic plan, and the Raven becomes the deputy Demiurge on Earth. At the command of the Creator, the Raven snatches a feather from its body places it on the water surface and thus creates the world. Then the creator decides to create creative rivers, lakes, trees, animals, and so on, and the raven performs the task. Eventually, the raven creates man and teach him how to reproduce. At the end of the myth, Demiurge Nainya acknowledges the grandeur of Kutkinaka's work and he totally left this world and the heavens that surrounded it. So the raven's typical mischievous nature caused him to create many men, but only women. When this woman chose her partner for reproduction, the other froze. We find the same example in Native American mythology. Coyote or rabbit, depending on the ethnic linguistic area we move in, they act as the deputy demiurge on earth, but they are also the creator of humanity, ancestor, and also civilizer. For example, in the mythical cycle of the Winnebuck Indians, the demiurge entrusts the trickster as his creative deputy on earth. At, at the demiurge's command, he creates people, edible berries, rivers, and so on, but he also creates things that are useless to people and harm them. The demiurge can no longer bear his tricks, so he takes his divine origin and banish from heaven. The totem hypostasis is no longer present so clearly in the more advanced communities with developed agrarian and state constitutional institution. The cultural and social development and constant layering of younger, often religiously strange material on the original mythological material results not only in a clearer contouring of the human-animal border, but also in the reconstruction of internal relations in the triadic civilizer ancestor demiurge complex. In the younger religious mythological stories, the semantically close figures gradually enter new ontological narrative relationships. As a matter of principle, the boundary between the active figure of a civilizer and the demiurge is sharply defined. After the act of creation, he finds himself in the position of a legislator and inactive god. This passive god creator lose control of the creative world, is backgrounded, and leaves the active cosmological role to either the official serious or mischievous comic civilizer who modifies the structure of his cosmogonic work in his own way. For example, the Greek trickster god Hermes clearly distinguishes himself from the creational couple Uranus and Guy, and unlike Prometheus, 
he also lose the function of an ancestor. He only acts in the role of a civilizer who brings culture to the people and gods in an accidental way. For example, he makes the first liar, invents a new way of divination from stones and commits the first theft. The same pattern of relations in the triadic complex civilizer ancestor Demiurge can be found in the figure of the Nordic Germanic trickster Loki, who also loses the function of an ancestor and sharply distances himself from the passive primary character of the Demiurge Buri. Loki only acts as a civilizer who uh, involuntarily brings gifts to the gods and their attributes, a ring to Odin, a hammer to Thor, golden hair to Sif, and so on. But he does not do of his own will for the good for the gods. A similar example is found in the Japanese trickster Susano, who does not identify with the primordial god and creator of the world, Ameno Minakanushi, nor does he fulfill the function of an ancestor. He only acts as a civilizer, for example, kills a dragon or snake and gives the goddess Amaterasu a sacred sword, Kusanagi, but as part of its negative function, it will cause this, for example, a solar eclipse. The restructuring of a relationship between the civilizer ancestor and the demiurge is often reflected in the demonization of the trickster, which was already pointed out by Italian anthropologist Raffaele Petanozzi. Using the examples from Native American mythology, he argues that the trickster is a residue of an archaic god creator who was replaced by the natural development of culture and religion and pushed out by another divine creator and thus becomes the demonic rival. However, American anthropologist Paul Radin rejects Petanozzi's argument as too simplistic. He admits that while the comic character of an elusive and contradictory trickster oscillates between a cultural hero and a demonized being, embracing the researchers and members of the same culture, he also insists that we are actually dealing with a complex process of wear and tear, uh, or the so-called worn-out archaism. <clears throat> now, let's say something about models of action, trickster civilizer, in the Asian narratives. In the terms of the gray mass actential model, the trickster is an entity that seeks to achieve a precious object in terms of the relationship of conjunction through his crafty and deceptive conduct, stealing, lying, inventing tricks, and so on. Gray Mass also emphasizes that this object is not necessarily another character, supernatural, human, or animal, but it can also be exceptional object or idea. In the cosmogonic narratives, the objects that the trickster civilizer want to win either for themselves or for other prominent figures most often include precious life-giving substance such as fire, sun, hunting animals, or cultural and civilizational achievements. Based on the examination of our textual material samples, we assume to exist of three models of action of the trickster civilizer through which his cosmological mischievous tendencies are revealed. For time reasons, I will only present them briefly in the next part of my presentation, together with some examples. The models are developed on props typological functional concept of acting characters. First model is heroism. The scheme behind this model can be seen in the presentation. When the trickster does heroic deeds throughout out the cosmological narrative for the benefit of humanity. He acts as a positive character and belongs to the category of good. The positive semantic field 
in which the trickster's action can be found, can be marked with a plus sign. Because the trickster is featured as a purely positive literary character in this type of stories and his status does not change, I consider this model aesthetic from the plot formative point of view. In terms of props typological functional concept of literary characters, the trickster can be undoubtedly labeled as a cultural hero who seeks various civilizational achievements, mostly fire, moon, and sun. To acquire objects, he usually uses his wit and gale. He invents various tricks to lure and distract the opponent. He deftly steals a precious object and then runs from the sea. For example, in the African tribes of Bamboots from the Congo, Mombuti, probably human, is trickster, cunningly intrudes himself into the favor of the chimpanzees who were once human and poses the fire. He visits them regularly, so they begin to perceive him as a friend in the settlement. When the adult chimpanzees go to work in the fields and only the young remain in the settlement, Mombuti takes the opportunity to steal the fire. He ties a lyco around his hips like a trail and enters the village. The chimpanzee children make fun of him for his special clothes, but then they sit together by the fire and the trickster, seemingly unknowingly, directs his trail to the fire. The children consider him a fool and laugh, telling him that the trail will light up and burn. Mombuti does not seem to notice the children's warnings and begins to eat bananas. In reality, however, he is waiting for the moment when the trail catches fire. When it happens, he escapes from the chimpanzee village and gives fire to all people. In this model of action, heroism, evil doing, the trickster civilizer does heroic deeds in the first half of the plot and his motivation is noble. He is trying to acquire objects or facilitate other characters' life on earth by inventing practical civilization achievements for example, a fishing net or hook, creation of hunting animals or destruction of a mythical demonic creature. The trickster's heroically intended actions, however, are ridiculed as a result of his awkwardness, clumsiness and foolish actions. Although the trickster indeed disturbed the harmonious structure of the corresponding mythological fabulous, in universe with a good and heroic intention. However, he unintentionally causes thus evil and brings a cosmological regression to other characters. The restoration of cosmological structures of the relevant fictional universe occurs either to the intervention of an assistant which returns him to original state or the narrator's explicit etiological comment, which legitimizes or sacralizes the changes caused by the trickster and the newly constituted cosmological order. I consider this model as dynamic from the plot formative point of view because the trickster transitions in the plot from the props positive function of a hero plus into the negative function of an evildoer minus. For example, Greek Titan Prometheus steals fire from gods to give it to the people and make their lives easier. God, god Zeus enraged because Prometheus treated him very boldly and rude. He was called constantly inventing new tricks to decide him in favor of people. Zeus therefore sent Pandora on the earth as punishment. She broke all evil and suffering in her box and released it among the people. The last model of action is the 
inverse version of the previous model in which the trickster transitions from the negative function of an evildoer, minus, into the positive function of a hero, plus. Even this model can be described as dynamic from the plot formative point of view because the trickster passed through multiple functional roles in the plot. In the first half of the plot, the trickster acts as an evildoer and his actions are motivated by hedonistic and libidinal desires, and his mischievous and destructive chaotic nature is revealed. However, the trickster's amoral and spitefully intended actions appear to, to be beneficial, and the trickster demiurge inadvertently causes cosmogonic progress in the fictional world. We can therefore label him as an involuntary hero, we borrow the involuntary modifier from prop who use it for the donor subtype. An example par excellence as the literary characters of the Russian Baba Yaga who first acts as an evildoer and later may, but may not accept the function of a usually involuntary donor or helper. Perfect examples of this model of action are narratives about the trickster of the Nordic Germany Glocki. There are very many of them, so we will choose only one as a representative. In one myth, Loki is bored. It is a typical activity for him. He wanders here and there, and suddenly the goddess Zif, the wife of the god Thor, walks past him. He quarrels with her out of boredom, and then cuts her hair while she's sleeping. Thor threatens to kill Loki for this act, but Loki cleverly ticks him. If he doesn't kill him, he will get Sif completely new and even nicer hair. Loki visits Dwarf Broco and deftly deceives him to forge new hair of gold for Sif. Loki then enters into into an unfavorable deal with the dwarf and obtains their precious items for him from him, for example, the Odin's gold ring Draupni or Thor's hammer Mjolni. The rough and natural physiologism, roughness and lasciviousness of expression are often an integral part of the iconization of a mischievous civilizer in the arch narratives and are mostly thematized in the last two dynamic models of action. This fact is most clearly illustrated by a selective sample of stories from the mythological mythology of the North American Indians. In many North American myths, the trickster is portrayed as a constantly wandering, salacious dump and hungry coyote, raven or other unspecified species for example, Sipkonski in Assiniboine Indians or Vaktiungaka in Winnebago Indians. These tendentious generally outweigh his purely heroic deeds that are thematized on the background of the first static model of Trickster's action, in which he acts as a cultural hero bringing fire, sun and game animals or hunting animals to the people throughout the narrative. American cultural anthropologist Paul Rabin, who has long been considered an authority in this field of expertise, sides with the hypothesis that the bipolar portrayal of the North American trickster, sometimes iconizing his grotesquely, grotesqueness fully, corporality and dark usufractual nature, and sometimes his skillful cultural civilizing and creations actions, are proof of contamination of the official indigenous cosmogonic and heroic cycles by the trickster motives. This contamination, however, does not only apply to the trickster cycles and the myth of the North American Indians. The same semantic image also appears in the old character of a mischievous raven Kutkinaka or Kut Kutch in the genealogically related folklore of the Paleo-Asian ethnicities. Today, 
there is no doubt that during the several migration waves over the Bering Strait, the Raven cycle divulged from the area of the Russian Far East to the territory of Canada and Northwestern America. Kutkinaka is therefore a kind of archaic prefigure of the trickster raven of the North American Indians. Like the North American tricksters, even the raven Kutkinaka oscillates on the border of an artful mischievous demiurge or civilizer and a hedonistic fool. In addition to the heroic myths, we are also familiar with the narratives, often from the same ethnic circle, where the raven acts as a libido driven character, which is exclusively based on corporari substantio. According to Komorowski, there is a whole cycle of myths about the raven, the creator or civilizer, in the folklore of Siberian Koryaks, Chukchos, Italmans, and some Inuit ethnicities, who, according to the, these people, gifted uh, the people with all material goods. He gave them reindeer and dogs and taught them to catch fish and so on. Most of the stories, however, talk about his coming adventures, hedonic appetites and sly tricks. In numerous stories of the paleo asian cycle, he is portrayed as a salacious old man who constantly cheats on his wife, notoriously lies to other characters, and misleads them in various ways. Similar the, to the North American trickster, the mischievous feature prevailed over the action carried out as a demiurge and cultural hero, even the Paleo-Asian raven. So it appears that the Amoral and Gluttony raven has survived in many myths for a much longer period of time than the demiurge or cultural hero and uh, uh, raven. According to Komarowski, the Chakchos folklore show its original multifunctionality because the ancestor, creator, and cultural hero can be portrayed as parallel even in one single myth, while he rather appears in the sly role of an old raven that uses his skills and guile to have intercourse or eat in the Koryaks and Itomans folklores. Hungarian philologist Karol Kereni notes that the comical character of an unrespable and contradictory trickster, which oscillates between the sly and clever cultural hero and a demonized, hedonistic, and lustful being, is the result of a natural process of wear of the formerly sacred religious ideas and talks. This state of late archaism as Kareni put it, can also be seen in the context of the internal structures of culture in which the cult and the related religious and mythological ideas shift from the official and serious plane sanctified by tradition to the folk plane in which comical elements are added to it and the originally sacred mythology becomes picaresque. Kareni's uh, picaresque mythology appears as a terminological equivalent of Bakhtin's notion of culture of popular laughter. Unlike Kereni, however, Bakhtin believes that the narrative and mimetic ceremonial manifestation of the culture of popular laughter are not the result of the state of lay archaism, that is the process desecration and wear, but they have or had a more important meaning. According to Bakhtin, the serious and comic religious mythological expressions were perceived as equal in the archaic times, and one might even say that they coexisted symboli symbiotically within the internal structure of culture. The serious and formal cults coexisted with the laugh cults that reviled the deity, just like the official mythological characters were accompanied by their parodic counterparts. However, with the advent of a more advanced class at state system, the full equality of serious comical was no longer possible. All laugh forms were shifted into the position of an unofficial cult 
and comically became the main expressive form of the popular expressing of the world, that is the popular or low culture, which is in principle typical for its low artistic value, lasciviousness, obscenity, and the grotesque portrayal of the body. The question whether the tricksteriats are the result of an archaic wear of the ancient cosmogonic cults, as claim Radin or Kerengi, or uh, whether they were legitimate and equal comic parody counterpoints to the serious rituals in the ancient times, as claims Bakhtin, cannot be answered unequivocally. However, it is important to note that the serious comical opposition, including its direct opposition, mental, physical, moderate, hedonistic, arranged, chaotic, which is figuratively presented as the true hero, cunning trickster in the arch narratives, appears to be an important binary model of the existential image of the mythological world. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Nicola. That Thank was you. really for these parts. First of all, it was very informative. Thank because, you very much. And it was very well structured and very well presented. Thank uh, you. I would, uh, why I say this is, this was because I, in the beginning, I mentioned that. The cosmogony of every society has its own creative stories, stories of creation. And when we know ours and come to know of other stories, so obviously there are aspects of overlap, comparison. Uh, for example, when you were mentioning about the trickster being the creator as well as the destroyer, you mentioned both, right? So yes. in our in 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 our pantheon of gods, uh, and there there are no there are no trickster in this category. They are gods. We have a creator god. We have a prison god, and we have a destroyer god. So the trinity of gods have their roles cut out the creator, the preserver, and the destroyer. Now, I was thinking in, in just to initiate the discussion that when the trickster becomes also a civilizer, I suppose the role of the preserver takes precedence. What do you have to say about it? Mm -hmm. um... I will be yeah. Okay, yes, uh, Sanjay, we will we will use the interpreter, but I'm not sure if he is here. Martin, are you here? If he's not, <clears throat> because he sent or me an email. Yes, yes, I will. I will definitely. Okay, uh, Nicole, možno si rozumela. prosím. Hey, Sanjay hovoril o tom, že v porovnaní s ich mytologickým systémom mm -hmm. uh, u nich sú bohovia, bohovia uh, ktorí majú funkciu tvorcu, potom mm -hmm. ten, ktorý akoby udržiava život a potom je tam ten, čo ničí. Mm -hmm. A jeho otázka súvisela s tým, že keď, že keď sa trickster stáva, stáva z tej pozície boha, Uh, tvorcu, uh, keď, keď akoby je tam aj ten posun k tomu, uh, ktorý ničí, mm -hmm. tak tá funkcia toho, ktorý udržiava, ten preserver, že akoby sa stáva dominantnou, že či by si vedela k tomuto niečo povedať v súvislosti s tým, uh, čo, čo, aké, aké je tvoje ponímanie tohto preserver. Mm -hmm. Uh, dominantnou v zmysle uh, takom, že prevažuje tá funkcia toho udržiavania. OK, uh, takže uh, povedala by som k tomu uh, toľko, že tým vlastne, že on neustále osciluje medzi kultúrnym hrdinom, teda tým, ktorý prináša nejaký život alebo prináša 
um, niečo konštruktívne, niečo vytvára a na druhej strane, že sa stáva tým, kto to zároveň ničí, tak uh, on a, ako keby neustále obnovuje ten um, poriadok, tú štruktúru toho sveta. To znamená, že ako keby tam nedochádzalo k tomu opotrebovaniu, že ne, neustále sa to vlastne obmienia a prináša sa do tej štruktúry niečo nové, ktoré, ktorú ju zároveň udržiava. A tým, že on mnohokrát prináša aj do, tej, do toho univerza také predmety, ktoré uh, v podstate definujú tú kultúru, tak tým pádom udáva tie jej hranice, kontúruje ju a tým vlastne udržiava, ako keby nastoluje ten aktuálny poriadok v tom svete. Mm-hmm. OK, so um, when, when there is this shift or that um, oscillation between, between the trickster and his function as a creator, and destroyer when he is in that position in that role of preserver it has very specific function because uh, through this he actually renews the order of the world and at the same time uh, there is this process of constant transformation and what is very important is that the trickster brings something he brings something new to the created universe So he is basically the element that shapes the culture, establishes the order. So Nicola fully agrees with uh, what you suggested about this important role of, uh, of um, the trickster as a preserver, that it's like a balance between creation and destruction. Ešte by som možno mohla k tomu povedať, že vlastne tá tripartita bohov, ktorú, ktorá bola myslená, tak teda domnívam sa, že išlo o Brahmu, Šivu a Višnu. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. A, a vlastne to som len chcela k tomu povedať, že ten trickster je veľmi špecifická, neuchopiteľná figura, ktorá vlastne v tej štruktúre tej spoločnosti alebo vo všeobecnosti tých recipientov, ktorí sa nachádzajú v tej kultúre, berujú veľmi kontroverzne sami a majú interpretačný problém uchopiť ju aj sami príslušníci tej kultúry. Čiže asi by som veľmi neporovnávala, ako tá funkcia tam samozrejme existuje, že je ten ničiteľ, je ten um, aj obnovovateľ a udržiava nejaký ten poriadok, ale tým, že to je stále v tej, ako keby spadá to do tej komickej roviny, tak nemôž, nemohla by, teda nechcela by som to úplne porovnávať s takými tými oficiálnymi kultmi, uh, ktoré sa brali ako higher authority a uh, vlastne m, zosobňujú tie, tie oficiálne kulty a tých oficiálnych bohov, ktorí vlastne nikdy nemohli byť ako keby spochybňovaní a v podstate uh, tie svoje komické prvky tam viac menej nenachádzame v týchto, ako, ako u toho trickstera. Mm-hmm. Lebo ten trickster je mnohokrát aj samotnými tými príslušníkmi v tých mýtoch zosmiešňovaný. Že on zároveň uh, napríklad prináša niečo dobré, ale mnohokrát je to zosmiešnené. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. A to sa teda nestáva v tých oficiálnych. OK, uh, OK, yes, yes. Um, so it, it, um, Nikola is saying that she would be careful to compare the trickster's functions of uh, the creator, preserver and destroyer with these um, gods Brahma, Shiva and Vishnu, because uh, they are like, um, there is this element of the ridicule and that the trickster is um, made fun of, which, which is the very important element that is missing in this official uh, tripartite of gods. Uh, yeah, that's so why I said they are not tricks. They are very clearly they are gods. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, definitely so. And she also added that Um, the, the problem or uh, actually the challenging aspect of the trickster, trickster is that even in the culture when that, uh, in which the character is really natural, like that it's the part of the cultural world, for people it's very difficult to interpret, like to come to certain conclusion as far as its features and the essence is concerned. 
So this is really fascinating aspect of it, that it's really very, very ambiguous character. Thank you. Thank you, indeed. Thank uh, you. Yes. Uh, if people who have joined here, if they have something to the question and observation, I would request you can unmute yourself and ask. I think people can unmute themselves and ask. That is what I, this is the first time we are holding this platform of Microsoft Teams. I, I suppose people can do that. Uh, and the host need not permit. In the, in the meantime, if I uh, can uh, ask you, Nicola, about um, since you speak about the the iconological representation of the trickster, uh, whether the trickster is a raven or a coyote, or when uh, it becomes a more anthropomorphic form, uh, Although, as we have come to know that the trickster has heroic qualities, the representation of the trickster is far from human. Why is it so? Uh, please turn on slide. Okay. Uh, please turn. Hej, takže čo sa týka tej ikonologickej reprezentácie uh, tejto postavy Trickstera, tak sa často, uh, považ, uh, tak sa často objavuje ako uh, v nejakej zvieracej podobe, či už je to kojot, alebo je to mm -hmm. raven. Uh, že, že prečo je to tak, že, že to ide skorej do tej zvieracej podoby, mm -hmm. ako do ľudskej? Že mm -hmm. aký máš na to náhľad? There is perfect question. <laughs> Uh, tam vlastne treba rozlišovať aj tak trošku to, že uh, či ide o tie prvotné spoločnosti alebo o tie spoločnosti, ktoré sa teda berú, že sú na nižšom stupni kultúrneho vývoja, ako sú teda najmä tie kultúry ovplyvnené šamanizmom, animizmom, ako napríklad tie uh, indiánske kultúry. A tam vlastne, ako som hovorila, je tá hranica medzi zvieraťom a človekom veľmi tenká. A mnohokrát uh, sa teda to zviera považovalo za nejakého totemového prápredka, takže tam vlastne tá, tie zomorfné prvky v podstate nie sú ničím ojedinelým. Ale vo všeobecnosti, prečo sa objavujú, objavuje takáto ľudsko-zvieracia chimerickosť, je v podstate um, pramení teda z tej esencie toho trikstera. On je vlastne vo všeobecnosti veľmi nejednoznačná a ambiguidná figura, to znamená, že je plná protikladov a uh, takisto je aj predstaviteľom takej tej m, telesnosti a grotesknosti a hyperbolizácie a uh, veľmi často sa tam objavuje práve tá anatomická hra s telom uh, a premena, ktorá vlastne posilňuje ako keby tú jeho interpretačnú neuchopiteľnosť a nejednoznačnosť a ešte viac umocňuje to, že vybočuje z rámca akýchkoľvek štruktúr. Čiže tie zvieracie prvky na tom tele, alebo tá nejednoznačná druhovosť, alebo takisto sa veľmi často objavuje nejaká telesná ľudská anomália, najmä potom v tých oveľa, oveľa mladších naratívoch, ako hrbatosť, napríklad rohatosť, alebo podobne. A súvisí to práve aj s tým, že je teda groteskným predstaviteľom tela a vo všeobecnosti tá smiechová kultúra, o ktorej napríklad hovoril Bachtin, alebo tá pikareskná mytológia, bola typická práve tou grotesknosťou, tým takým hrubým fyzio fyziologizmom, ktorý vlastne spôsobuje ten smiech. O tom hovorí napríklad aj Umberto Eco, že... Tá smiešnosť je veľmi často vyvolávaná práve tým, že je niečo smiešné a vybočuje to z toho rámca. A práve keď je to veľmi často spojené s tou grotesknosťou a 
takouto anomáliou vo všeobecnosti akoukoľvek, alebo nejakou obscenosťou, tak to vyvoláva taký um, prirodzený smiech v človeku. Je to teda prirodzene také znepokojivé, zároveň smiešné. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay, I'll try my best. Yeah, so she was, uh, she started with saying that it very much depends on um, um, the type of society in which the trickster appears, that in the primitive societies, not meant negatively, but um, in those societies which um, in, in which there is shamanic culture spread and the borders between animals and and people are very fluid, So it's somehow natural that the trickster, or one, one of the most very important characters in their mythological systems, would become an animal. Like that's like the part of their world. Uh, and they frequently have the totemic ancestor, uh, an animal. So it's all um, in, interrelated. So zoomorphic elements are very common in those cultures. And then the second part of it is that um, This animalism actually is closely connected also uh, to this aspect of comicism or laughter or ridicule or hyperbole. So um, it's very closely connected with playing with the body. Like very often the trickster characters have distorted bodies, which should provoke laughter at those who are listening to those stories. So it's also related to, to that aspect of not being human like but uh, having the features that would provoke laughter or ridicule uh, at, at other people thank you Nicola yes thank we you, have Nicola. I have a question here uh, so uh, The uh, Professor Zala wants to ask uh, that tricksters disrupt the existential aspects and then civilizes. And the interesting thing is, is not the civilizing aspect a disruption in itself? Mary, please, you can put me. Uh-huh, uh-huh. A, takže uh, pro, profesor Zala sa pýta, nie je úplne jasný, som tomu rozumela. Neviem, možno si aj ty dačo pochopila z toho. Uh, týka sa to toho aspektu uh, tvorcu a toho, ktorý ničí. Mm-hmm. A teda... Um, počkaj, ešte raz sa spýtam. Sanjay, just to make clear. So the question was concerning uh, the civilizing aspect of the character of the trickster. Who, who like shifts from uh, from the role of the constructor or creator to this destroyer? Uh, to to a disruptor, the, the flow mm-hmm. goes on and and the uh, trickster disrupts. Yes. Now yes. Now uh, part of the part part of the process of civilizing. Mm-hmm. also is in a positive sense i suppose a disruption mm-hmm. and okay bring, okay uh-huh. bringing the chaos into some kind of a system mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yes uh, takže v zmysle toho že uh, že je tam aj tá funkcia niekoho kto uh, ten ten spoločenský poriadok prerušuje tak mm-hmm. keď to dáme do súvislosti s tou funkciou, že prináša civilizáciu, že akoby civilizuje, tak aj ten aspekt civilizácie v sebe vlastne zahrnuje paradoxne aj nejaké disruption, že teda prerušenie niečo starého mm-hmm. a nastolenie istého aspektu chaosu. Čiže mm-hmm. či by si vedela k tomuto sa nejako z tvojho uhlu pohľadu vyjadriť? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Uh... To, to krúhové ničenie, alebo to cyklické ničenie a vytváranie času je typické, ten, to cyklické ponímanie času je typické pre staroveké kultúry a objavuje sa prakticky vo všetkých tých mytológiách. 
Čiže ide o nejaký nekonečný proces tvorenia, ničenia, tvorenia, ničenia, ktorý je pre, pre tie staroveké kultúry prirodzený. Oni vnímali vlastne všetko v takejto cyklickosti. No a práve ten trickster, tým, že on vybočuje, tým, že je taký nejednoznačný a ambivalentný, on vybočuje zo všetkých týchto pravidiel, ktoré sa vlastne týkajú akýchkoľvek iných postav, ktoré v tom štruktúre toho univerza sa nachádzajú, fiktívneho. A tým, že on stojí ako keby nad všetkým a má ako keby akýsi odstup, tak on vlastne práve t- t- tá hra to playfulness, tá, tá komickosť, to otočenie sveta na ruby dokáže v podstate v tom svojom, dokáže to vlastne vykonávať na tom univerze. A tam vlastne sa objavuje pri tom ničení ďalšia taká veľmi dôležitá funkcia popri tom civilizátorovi, o ktorom som teda teraz hovorila, tak trickster plní aj funkciu figliara alebo takého kritika spoločnosti. A práve pri tejto funkcii je to také najviac výrazné, že on vlastne tým svojim disturbatívnym správaním ako keby destabilizuje všetky tie štruktúry, kritizuje mocenské autority, či už sakrálne alebo svedské, a tým vlastne destabilizuje celú tú štruktúru. A dochádza tým vlastne k nejakému eschatologickému princípu. Uh-huh. OK. Uh, so, um, she, she sees this as part of some kind of cyclic understanding or cyclic creation of time in ancient uh, mythologies, in which there is this always... Um, flowing process of creation and destruction, which is very, uh, very typical for those societies. And then within this, the character of Trickster plays a very interesting role because he, as if he is, escapes all the rules that have been created for other characters that inhabit the universe. Um, And he is as if observing what is going on from a distance. So he is slightly detached from what is going on. And in this aspect of destruction, there is another important function. Um, Dr. Danishova was concentrating today on, on the function of a civilizer, but there is another function of the trickster, which is like a critic of a society that he is basically in the position through his disturbing behavior he is um he has that courage to criticize any authority be it a worldly authority or a sacral authority so in this case in in this sense uh he somehow um recreates or adds very important elements to this creative process which is which is never ending Thank you on behalf of Professor Zala as well as myself. Uh, as I was listening uh, and the pronounced, uh, uh, the, the pronounced, he kept on coming. Uh, does the trickster, I mean, the shape shifter, the form changer can also change gender? Yes, change gender very often. <laughs> Tým, že on je vlastne liminárny, liminarita je jeden z jeho univerzálnych vlastností. Lebo ten trickster, tým, že je tak interpretačne mnohoznačný, tak on sa veľmi často mení. Ale um, teda stanovili sme šesť univerzálnych vlastností a liminarita, čiže taká tá nejednoznačnosť, je jeden, jedna z nich. A tým, že on um, je, sa stále tá, tá hra groteskná s tým telom a vo všeobecnosti metamorfóza, ktorá prevláda aj v tom jeho konaní, tak on vlastne tou svojou nejednoznačnosťou je nejednoznačný aj v tom gendri. A uh, veľa, veľa príbehov teda poznáme, kde mení svoju podobu. Napríklad v jednom uh, indianskom mýte sa premienia na ženu a to veľmi takým groteskným spôsobom, že vlastne zabije jelenia a z jeho vnútornosti si vymodeluje ženské telo a takýmto spôsobom... Pomalšie, pomalšie. Áno. <laughs> okay. uh-huh. Môžeš ďalej. 
A takýmto spôsobom teda ide za tým náčelníkovým synom, aby si ho vzal za ženu, aby mohol získať jedlo zadarmo v podstate a bez námahy. Takisto hermafroditizmus vo všeobecnosti sa napríklad veľmi často v tej gréckej mytológii tematizuje. Takže áno, tá liminarita, aj tá gendrová, je veľmi typická preto a súvisí práve s tým groteskným naturalizmom, o ktorom hovoril Bachtin v tej svojej populárnej kultúre, alebo s tou groteskou telesnosťou. Okay, yeah. So um, this is this is very closely related to um, um, this feature of ambiguity or liminality, which is very universal. It's like one of very uh, typical features that characteristics that the trickster has. Um, and as far as this uh, shifts into different gender uh, are concerns, uh, there are many stories in which the trickster. Uh, transforms changes from uh, the male to the female and there there is for example story um, in an Indian myth in which uh, the trickster uh, kills a deer and um, from the intestines uh, Nikol z vnútornosti, pre, vnútornosti premení na ženu? Nie, on si tie vnútornosti na seba dá a vymodeluje tak uh, zo seb- vlastne zo seba ženské telo. Okay, yes. So in that story, uh, the trickster kills the deer and from the intestines of the deer, he actually reshapes his body. So he becomes a woman. And then he, be, or she, this is the chieftain. Navštivi um, osadu. Hej, a? A tam vlastne sa vydá, lebo ožení za náčelníkovho syna, aby mal zadarmo jedlo. Okay, yeah. Uh, and in the form of a woman, uh, he ma- she marries uh, the chieftain's son uh, so that he would get food and some rewards. So it's really interesting how the trickster character can be modified, can, can reappear in different gender forms in the stories. And it's also connected with the question of hermaphroditism Uh, which yes. is typical for uh, ancient Greek uh, culture. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, great. Very good. Uh, I, I have in the meantime discovered that uh, people can also put in their queries in the chat box. Uh, I think they are so fascinated that they are just listening to you, Nicola. Uh, <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, Uh, one uh, one last thing from my side uh, is uh, uh, you must have heard of um, Ted Hughes, uh, the British poet. Uh, uh, I was thinking that, like you mentioned Vladimir Krop, you mentioned Umberto Eco, you mentioned, of course, Bakhtin. And, uh, but creatively, somebody who has played with the theme of the trickster Uh, has been Ted Hughes in his Crow series of poems. Raven, he shifts it to Crow. And, and it is just an observation. Uh, probably it might add on to your research. There is this entire series of poems called the Crow series by Ted Hughes, where, wherein the function of the Crow is typically that of the, of the disruptor into uh, and and of course here the, the there is no no theogony or no pantheon of god but but it is the christian god so what that what the trickster does what the crow does is to problems uh, and disrupt god's plans the christian god's plans so that is something that i that i was reminded of by uh, from these series of poems called the crow series It is just an observation. It's a... mm-hmm. Hej, čiže ako nejaké také pozorovanie, ale možno aj námet pre ďalší výskum, tak mm-hmm. bol tu spomínaný britský básnik Ted Hughes, 
ktorý je známy, má známu aj takú sériu básni, ktoré, ktoré sa venujú básni o vrane The Crow Series. A v tejto, v tejto sérii básni vlastne The Crow zastáva funkciu of disruptor. A pričom nie je tu, je tu mito, takto, mytológia je tu brana kresťanská, čiže stáva sa nie, niekým takým, ktorý, ktorý akoby disrupts God's plans, plány kresťanského boha. Mm-hmm. Takže neviem, či, či chceš reagovať, či poznáš túto Tedovú Hughesovú zbierku. Uh, nie, ne, nepoznám túto zbierku, ale uh, keď si hovorila o tom, že uh, vlastne... Mm, o čom píše teda, tak som tam objavila v podstate uh, taký jeden motív, ktorý súvisí opäť s tým trikstovstvom alebo s tými triksteriádami a to je práve tá demonizácia uh, toho trikstera, keď sa stáva protivníkom toho, uh, toho najvyššieho boha stvoriteľa. A práve keď uh, došlo, dochádzalo k kristianizácii v tých mnohých pôvodných kultúrach, tak uh, ten trickster už sa začali vyzdvihovať len čisto tie jeho negatívne vlastnosti a stával sa synonymom diabla. A v podstate potom začal vystupovať ako diabol, ako protivník Boha. Čiže takú asociáciu mi to navodilo, že vlastne tá vrana takisto je nejaký ten znepokojiteľ, alebo ten, kto preka- preka- prekazuje tie plány. Tak, takú asociáciu som tam videla. A v rany, alebo vo všeobecnosti aj ten trickster je preto veľmi často zobrazovaný ako havrán, alebo vrana, alebo v podstate akákoľvek, akékoľvek tie vtáky, ktoré patria do tohto druhu. Preto, lebo sa vo všeobecnosti vnímajú veľmi inteligentné a keď sa pozorovalo ich správanie, tak mnohokrát boli zistené také prekvapivé výsledky, že komunikujú medzi sebou alebo že vykazujú veľmi veľkú inteligenciu, ku ktorej patrí aj práve tá prešíbanosť, ktorá je pre ne typická. Mm-hmm. Takže aj z takéhoto správania z toho pozorovania toho prirodzeného sveta mnoho tých vzorcov prešlo práve do tej mytológie. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, she's not familiar with uh, Ted Hughes and the series, but she's uh, really thankful for, for uh, this uh, suggestion, so she would definitely uh, have a look at that. But uh, talking about the symbolism and the image of, of um, um, the crow, and especially um, in um, terms of um, Christianization, um, that actually uh, the trickster character, when the world's uh, certain cultures were Christianized. So there was the trickster um, gradually took the role of the devil uh, in, in, in that culture. So there is this conflict or what would you call it, like trickster becomes the enemy of God and often takes the role of the devil or shifts into, into the role of the, of, of the devil. So the anti-God, are, probably. Yes, yes, yes. And then concerning uh, the, the raven, uh, the crow and all the birds that belong to this category, um, uh, there has been research that proves that they are very intelligent Uh, their their behavior was observed and many aspects that the trickster uh, has uh, are related to the characteristics of, of these birds, like that aspect of being cunning. So it's all uh, related, like the, end, the features of the bird uh, have been trans, trans, transported, transformed into, into the character, transferred to the character of the trickster. Great, we, we have been having a great conversation. It was such a good presentation. And uh, so on behalf of everyone here, uh, I thank you, Dr. Danishova. Uh, it was, I mean, we will, we will carry this talk, we will carry it and, and try to uh, compare, correlate with our stories of similar types. And it has certainly enriched all of us who have been who have been listening to you. Uh, from all of us here, we thank you and we wish you the very best. 
And also, we hope that we again have opportunities to interact with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for your attention.